Coming in from Rosedale, northwestern moderate TV and patches coming in from Royal. Southwestern southbound a heavy patch from my order street, northbound moderate TV from Great South through to Portage Road. Southern motorway moderate TV and patches city bar Manyareva through to Newmarket. Save up to 50% on selected indoor and outdoor furniture in soon. King of Parnell. News Talk ZB Weather Watch 24 7 with Armstrong's dealership group. Drive now, pay later, terms apply. Monaco, southwest 15 knots. Waitamata, southwest 15 but 10 west of the Harbour Bridge. Hodaki Gulf, southwest 20, gusting 30. And a strong wind advisory, bring me to Cape Colville. The high tide at Auckland, 20 past 4 this afternoon. Onihunga, 7 30 this morning. Auckland today, cloudy periods, few showers, mainly in the afternoon and evening. Fresh southwesterlies as well. Today's high, 16. Currently, we're sitting on 12 here at News Talk ZB. The policy versus the personality. Chris Hipkins, the leader's breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Arvida. Live the age you feel. News Talk ZB. Good morning, 7 past 7. So as we enter the final week of the campaign of 2023, time now for the final of our Leaders' Breakfast. Chris Hipkins for two hours on the last three years, the change of leadership, the direction of the country and the potential result and fallout of this Saturday night. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Out of 10, how are you feeling? Oh, pretty good. Uh, you know, I mean, are you questioning health-wise or campaign-wise? Well, let's there, do Mike? both. <laughs> well, look, health-wise, I'd say I'm about an eight or a nine. You know, still, still got a little bit of recovery to go, but certainly feeling a lot more energetic than I was a week ago. A campaign three or four? Uh, no, campaign. I'd say you know we're in the upper half with the campaign, but we've still got a wee way to go. Talk to me about the uh, some current issues to start with. First of all, what on earth was Nanaya Mahuta thinking when she put that release out? I think the wording could have been stronger, and um, ultimately, I did the statement uh, a few, literally a few hours later, that where the wording was a bit stronger, uh, it was a lot stronger actually. And um, you know, I, I'm not going to get too hung up on that. I think the wording could have been stronger, but the, the New Zealand's position on this has has been very clear right from the beginning. You know, we support a two state solution. That's New Zealand's long standing position. Both, I think, both major parties in New Zealand support that as the um, as the ultimate resolution here. Uh, but what's happened is just abhorrent. Did you? D- I'm led to believe you didn't even talk to her before she put the statement out. Is that correct? Uh, no, I was um, unavailable. I was busy doing other campaign-related activities at the time. But um, I'm, you know, very comfortable with the statement that I then put out later on in the morning. You wouldn't have had to put out another statement if she had put out a proper one in the first place, though, would you? Oh, I think it's likely I would have um, wanted to say something about this anyway. I mean, it is a it is a major international event. Does she not understand the international stage? Uh, no, look, I don't think people should read too much into it. I mean, I think your wording could have been stronger, but ultimately we were saying the same thing. It's wrong. Um, and, you know, we, we do want to see a two-state solution. We do want to see de-escalation. Uh, but we absolutely respect Israel's right to defend itself. Having said that, the reason I ask about this is, is because her appointment originally was unusual. Do you see it as unusual? I don't see it as unusual at all. She's been a very long-standing member of Parliament. I, I don't really see any... Is that the criteria to be a foreign affairs minister, just being around the place a long time? No, she's a long-standing member of Parliament. I think she's actually represented New Zealand incredibly well internationally. She doesn't like travel. Uh, she's travelled extensively over since in the time. But she that doesn't I've been. like it. She doesn't like it, and she seems to misread the Middle East oh, in she, the most astonishing way. She's travelled extensively in the time that I've been prime minister. And I think she's done a good job. And so you you would back her again if you win the election this Saturday. She's the foreign minister for the foreseeable. Well, well I'm not doing. I'm not dishing out jobs uh, in a future government today. But I, I have absolute confidence in Nanaia Mahuta. The Auckland Council decision on Friday, as regards the buyout, does it set a precedent as Wayne Brown suggests, or not? Um, one of the things we've been very mindful of is that we're going to need a more robust framework around buyouts for flood affected and cyclone affected and just generally you know, managed retreat. We're going to need a more robust framework for that. Um, there have been a number of natural disasters in New Zealand now, the Canterbury earthquake, the cyclones, the flooding, um, where we've had to put bespoke arrangements in place. Um, I do see the stuff that we've done around the flooding and the cyclone as a one-off, but we're going to, but it's going to inform, I think, decisions that government's going to need to take longer term. Because what he said was they're, they're setting the payout at about 80% for uninsured, 95%, I think it is, for insured people. What does that say to uninsured people? Why would you bother? You're getting 80% next time it rains. I mean, what's that about? Well, I think one of the things that we do have to look at in terms of a long-term framework is how we ensure that government doesn't become a default insurer. 
Right. Do you worry about that? Yes, I do. Um, and it's a, look, it's not a new dilemma. The, the um, national government found the same dilemma after the Canterbury earthquakes as well. If we create the, the message, the long-term message, that if you're uninsured, well, don't worry, government is on the hook for 80% of your buyout anyway, um, I think that sends the wrong message. Now, you have to deal with things on a case-by-case basis at the moment, but we do need a longer-term, more predictable framework for this. Winston Peters in the poll, you've seen not the general polls, but the poll no one trusts him in this country, right? So just, just for all of the the people who've texted this morning rule out in the best way verbally you know how Look, that you will not deal with him he will not ring you you will not ring him there is no there is nothing there to keep talking about for the rest of this week because I'm abs- so sick and tired of this. There is absolutely, I mean, I made this very clear several months ago. There is absolutely no prospect of a Labour New Zealand First governing arrangement following the election. If Winston Peters holds the balance of power, he'll be sitting around the table with Christopher Luxon and David Seymour trying to figure out how to put a government together. Labour will not be involved in those conversations. Latest conspiracy theory is you'd quit on the night and therefore somebody, the new leader, would be able to go, oh, well, I didn't make that promise, so therefore. That was a collective decision. I, I didn't do that in isolation. I went and I got the endorsement from that position, from from the whole team for that position. OK. Over the weekend also, the Australians are chasing $40 million from quarantine. How much is owed to us? I haven't actually looked at that for a while, Mike, so I don't have the most up-to-date Are figures. we chasing anything? Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, I'm going back about a year now because I obviously haven't been involved in the, those particular that portfolio for over a year now, but there was certainly a money outstanding at the time uh, that I, I stopped being Minister for COVID Will you response. get every dollar back? Um, I don't know. Um, I think it's unlikely we will get every dollar back. Um, debt to government is uh, always proves to be tricky in, in any context to be able to recover. Do you regret that? Um, I certainly think that uh, MIQ was the right thing to do. It was full of complication. It was not easy. The mechanism um, in which you use by we didn't use a credit the, card like any other hotel the in the world to pay the up The front. mechanism for charging, I think, certainly could have been better in the beginning. It's m- Most of the debt is is not the latter stays. It's it's the earlier stays. It's when MIQ was first literally slapped mm. together at the beginning. So you would have done um, it differently? Oh, absolutely. More in a moment from Chris Hipkins. Uh, Hipkins. It's 13 past seven. Rugby World Cup 2023. All Blacks v Ireland. Live commentary this Sunday from 8 a.m. on iHeartRadio and News Talk ZB Auckland 89.4 FM. He may be happy with this week's everyday low prices at New World. Pam's fragrance-free baby wipes, 140s, 409 each. Pam's convenience nappies or nappy pants, 11 to 13 packs, 579 each. Now that's New World value. Size of service exclusions apply. Just imagine, no clear election winner. Eight weeks of coalition talks. Nothing gets done. Don't risk the uncertainty. To guarantee a change of government, Party Vote National. Authorised by Jay Dejou, 41 Pippetier Street, Wellington. Save thousands on kitchen, bathroom and laundry renovations. Shop online at Trade Depot. Freestanding stoves just three nine nine. Fridge freezers just three nine five. Dishwashers just three fifty. Washing machines just two eight nine. Save thousands on renovations. Shop online now at Trade Depot or visit the massive Trade Depot store in Onihunga. You can put off mowing the lawns. You can put off the dog groomer. You can put off organising the utensil drawer. You can put off emptying the dishwasher. But some things are too important to put off, like protecting your family's financial future with AA Life Insurance. Get covered with a trusted Kiwi brand, plus take out Life Cover today and receive a $100 Prezi card. Today's the day. Search AA Life Insurance now. T's and C's apply. Ready, set, it's holiday time thanks to BP. Win a family trip to tropical North Queensland, Australia to enjoy a week of fun in the sun and catch all the supercars action live. You'll get to enjoy the place and the race. Price includes flights, accommodation, five grand spending money, tourist experiences and supercars tickets for four. Simply swipe your AA Smart Fuel card when you spend over $40 on BP Fuel and you're in the draw to win. To find out more, head to bp.co.nz slash superholiday. Terms and conditions apply. Competition closes 14th of November 2023. I used to just be Jack, but now I'm Jack the small business owner. Jack the website designer. Jack from finance. Jacko the hip social media intern. Jackie from marketing. Jack the SEO guy. Jack if you run a small business like Jack, you need Thrive. All-in-one management software built for small businesses like yours. With Thrive, you can message customers, schedule appointments, process payments, and more. All from the same place. Get Thrive. 
thryv.co.nz. News Talk ZB, 15 minutes past seven. The uh, Leaders' Breakfast final, Leaders' Breakfast for 2023. Chris Hipkins is with us. The deficit numbers came out on Friday, uh, worse than we thought. And yet last week you were also telling us, you're on Kerry's show, I think, telling us about Q2 being better than anyone but Japan or whatever your current figure was. The fact is, we are sinking in debt. Well, and think, going backwards. Well, I mean, if you look at um, where we're doing better than every country other than Japan, that's economic growth. That's so the latest the, the, quarterly where did you economic get that growth. Was that Q two? Yeah, Q two figures. Right, so, so just Q two. Yeah, but I mean, uh, look. You, you, I mean, any, what, a, what, given, a cheek, what a cheeky little number that was. Well, but, but Mike, bearing in mind that for for much of the first half of the year, a lot of people were going around saying New Zealand was in recession when we weren't, and actually our economic growth is far stronger than than most of the economists. Can, were can we be clear that, that when, when I was one of the people who said we were going to be in recession? Well, and, I I wasn't going to say that. Well, no, you're allowed to. <laughs> but but we, we didn't growth. You then used the word growth. There was no growth. Zero is growth. We went from minus 0.1 to zero. There's no growth. Yeah, but it's not a recession. Um, and actually, the most recent quarterly figures, are, again, show that the economy is bouncing back. Yes, there are some areas of the economy which are bouncing back slower. But we, you know, we've seen a slower than expected recovery in tourism. But as you just, I think I heard just yeah, as coast, I was coming yeah. in, um, we are actually seeing a really healthy bounce back there in some of those tourism numbers now. Um, international fuel prices are still continues to have quite a whack on our balance of payments. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, that those international fuel prices staying higher for longer and we have to brace ourselves for the fact that they could stay higher f- you know that they, they could be they could continue to go higher okay the deficit 9.4 billion compared with a forecast of 6.9 so we're still getting the forecasts hopelessly wrong and then you top that on the 9.4 on top of last year's 9.7 are we still blaming covid how long uh, are we going to blame COVID for? One of the reasons that we shaved $4 billion in spending uh, earlier in the year was we want to make sure we're getting the books back into surplus. We don't want to see New Zealand in a position where we're indefinitely I don't running want to inter- I don't want to interrupt, but that, yeah. that $4 billion, it's important to point out from the spend for the next four years, do you realise you must, is zero. 0.7% of what will be spent. Yeah, but we will get the books back into surplus within the forecast period, which is the commitment that we've made. You know, we, we have if, you, if we don't want to have more debt, then we've got to get the books back no. into surplus. But you can't say that, because you've said that several times, and each year you've been wrong. Well, so did Bill English for the, pretty yeah. much the entire time. What I'm saying is forecasts are a waste of time. For, you may as well throw a dart at a board. Forecasts are very volatile, and the national government found that, and the Labour government mm. has found that too. Forecasts can be very volatile, but I still think governments need to strive to get the books back into surplus. Are you striving given that you spend more every year than you say you will spend? Well the economy is growing so if you look at... The economy if, but, isn't growing but the economy grew in Q2 if you look at from a base of zero. Well if you look at government spend as a percentage of the economy, actually we topped out slightly higher than the national uh, government topped out after the global financial crisis. You and we're coming out, back... You topped out by 11 billion dollars. We're, we're coming back down to the long run average in terms of the, you know the percentage of government spend as a share of the overall GDP. We are coming back to the long run average. It is coming down down again. But you're not there yet. No, we're not there and yet. And you haven't been there in your entire six years. So the government expenses at $162 billion was nearly $11 billion ahead of last year. So, but I mean, let's let's take this, because I know you, you get the billion dollars a week is the figure that gets bandied around a lot. $150, billion of, $150 million of that, sorry, is superannuation. So that's increases in superannuation. $200 million of that's money that's going directly into the health system. That's doctors' wages, nurses' wages, and so on. $100 million of that's going into the education system. So, you know, I've, I've accounted for, pretty, for about half of that already, and that's just dealing with the, with those kind of key big portfolio areas. Then we've got things like housing. When you build more houses, there's an operating expense on that for government in terms of income-related rentals. So you're not worried about the amount of money you've spent in the debt we have? What was that? You're not worried about the amount of money you spend in the debt we have. Oh, debt should always concern us, but relative to the rest of the world, we've still got very low levels. You've got of to debt. stop using that as well because it doesn't matter. Our problems, our problem. They're, these are major economies. They're, the countries that have problems are places like Britain and the United States. You know, they are many, many times bigger than us and have domestic markets that can drive growth out of it. We don't have all we have is exporting and a bad dollar, and we're in a world of pain. We're going to be spending ten billion dollars. Just servicing the debt, interest only. Well, well, Ten look, billion dollars. If you look at our neighbours across the Tasman, their levels of government debt relative to the size of their economy is about double what ours is. Yeah, but they're running a surplus. Uh, uh, well, only just. They've run twenty, they've run, but 20 they've run, billion dollars. They've run decades. Twenty long billion deficits. dollars worth of surplus is only just. Yeah, no, that's no, what they announced the other day. No, twenty only, billion only dollars, and only recently they've run. They run decades of surpluses. This is the first surplus they've produced in a very long time. Fifteen years, yeah. but it's a twenty billion dollars surplus, and we're not running a surplus or anywhere close well, to it. Will, so, should you really be comparing well, us to Australia? We will be.
win, with according another, to the forecast by 26-27. That's right. After saying it'll be in 24-25, then 25-26. Well, a lot's happened in that time, Mike. I mean, if you look at <laughs> if you look at some of our expenditure this year, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to apologise for spending extra to support people through the cyclone recovery and the flood recovery. But of that $11 billion I just gave you ahead of a year ago, only one7 has been spent on cyclone recovery. So you spent 11, 1.7 on cyclone. Sure, nothing wrong with that. Where's the other nine? Well, we've also been supporting New Zealand through an economic downturn and inflationary pressure. So let's let's go and look at where some of that money's gone. Teacher salaries have gone up, nurses' salaries have gone up, um, public sector salaries have gone up. Um, not unreasonably, they've been saying, "Well, our prices are going up. We think we should be paid more." Um, that's where a lot of that money goes. All right, brief break. More in a moment. Seven twenty-one. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver traffic. Here's sushi value of the day is chicken teriyaki. Good morning. Now the northern heavy patch through Silverdale. Then it's heavy coming in from Constellation. Southwest and southbound heavy just past my auto street. Northbound moderate heavy in patches from Lambie Drive. Northwest and moderate heavy from Royal. And moderate heavy in patches on the southern motorway city bound Manure with through to Newmarket. Sushi value of the day. Eight delicious pieces for under $8 from St. Pierre's. Marching into Auckland this week, the Music Man in Concert, Broadway's happiest musical, from the producers of Chess, Jersey Boys, and Kinky Boots, featuring 24 big band songs, including the hit 76 Trombones, a huge cast of our finest performers and musicians, including the legendary Royal New Zealand Navy Band. Don't miss this extravaganza at the Kira De Kano Theatre. All remaining tickets at $65. Hurry to Ticketmaster today. Spend a spooky Halloween with Look Sharp Store. Get ready with their huge selection of costumes and accessories for a spine-chilling makeover. Set the stage with full-size props and decorations. From animated clowns and lawn stakes to life-size skeletons and more to frightening to list. And for a limited time, enjoy 20% off LS brand inflatables and props. Look Sharp Store. Eight scary stores opened wide and looksharpstore.co.nz. Material handling equipment is now easier to buy online at halliforklifts.co.nz. Halley New Zealand has launched their redesigned e-commerce website. Buy, quote and browse the latest Halley warehouse equipment and forklifts with ease. Powerful, safe, dependable and ready to go right now. Talk to the Halley team today. Get a quote on forklifts or purchase warehouse equipment online instantly. Halley forklift, lifting the future. Go to halliforklifts.co.nz. Friends or Fano coming to New Zealand? Let them know they'll need to do a New Zealand Traveller Declaration. Go to travellerdeclaration.govt.nz to find out more. Good stuff is so hard to find these days. Sounds like you need Beyond Recruitment. Who? Beyond Recruitment. They help people find jobs and employers find the best talent. Sounds great, but how do I find them? Yeah, check out beyondrecruitment.co.nz. Now, the team at About Health always looking at ways to uh, make their supplements better for you and aligned with their latest research. Their popular Element 12 Magnesium, formulated specifically to suit New Zealand lifestyles and nutrient needs. So there are three types of high-quality magnesium with active forms of B vitamins, so it's designed to be well absorbed, gentle on the old stomach, and Element 12 is a blend of 12 important nutrients as well, designed to support deep sleep, relaxation, healthy nerves, muscles, and mood function. So if you've had the mixed results with the other magnesium supplements, uh, give the Element 12 magnesium a go, 0800 399 Use the code BREAKFAST and you'll receive also one month's worth of anxiety ease to support the mental well-being as well. Read the label, take only as directed, of course. Uh, the Element 12, everyone loves it. Feel confident that you will as well, backed with a 100% money-back guarantee. Order now. It's available at About Health, 0800 399 7.24, Prime Minister uh, Chris Hipkins is with us. Uh, other matters I wanted to get through that are in the news at the moment, that Pharmac story with Rachel Smalley. What's the matter with the woman who's running Pharmac? Why does she behave that way? Well, ultimately, that is a question for the Pharmac board. But I, I'll, I'll say publicly, I think that um, you know the comments that she's made in those in that email trail are unacceptable. I, I would expect better of conduct from someone holding a, a senior position like that. What should happen to her? Uh, ultimately, again, that is a question for the board of Pharmac. Um, they can get some guidance and some support from the Public Service Commissioner as well. But it's not the sort of politically neutral, professional public nothing service cl- approach that we would it. expect to see. And, and if it hadn't been for the OIA, we would never have known that. 
And how many other people in the public service, do you reckon, have that same broad view, that sneering arrogance? I actually don't think that's reflective of the um, overall culture within the public service. I think the culture within the public service is one of you know serving whichever government of the day is in office um, and genuinely trying to do the right thing to serve the New Zealand public. Um, but I, I think this is unacceptable. If it was up to you, would you sack her? Um, again, it's not up to me, and and it's important. I think anyone who is a minister or wants to be a minister shouldn't really wade into that territory. We'll talk about justice later, and we've talked a number of times about the business of the Sentencing Act and and the gap between politicians and judges. But is there a too big a gap between you and the public service? I mean, if I was a minister, I'd be all over this. No, I mean, I think in this particular case, this is a question for the chair of the Farmac board. Now, I'm sure ministers will express... Who appoints the chair? A minister will express their view to the, to chair, the, chair. To the chair of the board. Has the minister expressed um, their view? Yes, absolutely. Um, but not doing that publicly. I mean, can we, can th- we th- these are the, employment matters, after Sure. All. Can we put it in the way that the, the chair of the board, which is Mahari, of course, who's another old Labour mate of yours, is he in any doubt as to what the minister thinks? No, I, I would say not. And based on that, would you be surprised if he didn't do something tangible about what has unfolded there? I, I think he certainly um, is well aware that the government is unhappy, uh, the Labour government is unhappy with what's happened here. And something should happen as a result of it, as opposed to just a telling off or a well, finger we, wag. We couldn't direct him in that regard, um, because again... You but know, but the you've employment... conceded he's in no doubt as to how you feel, and you will be expecting something to come of this. Uh, well, I certainly, th- I will certainly say that he's in no doubt of how the government, of the, how the government views it. Very go. First half hour done just like that. Should you be on the Coke Zeros? Well you, you, you've just given me one so I think well, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we gave you one because you, you asked for one Should you be on the Coke Zeros? How many of these are you going to knock off before nine? Uh, well no, only, only one one or two a day now I've cut it down to one or two a day. Okay fair enough yeah. you, you feeling better for it then? Yeah 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 well, it's, it's my caffeine hit. Good on you uh, More from Chris Hipkins after the news which is next. Is your bookkeeping running like clockwork? Or are there some business alarm bells ringing? If you're struggling to keep up with your accounts receivable, payable, cash flow, banking, payroll, GST, FBT, outsource it all to Clockworks, New Zealand's award-winning bookkeeping provider, offering you a complete virtual bookkeeping and accounts team because successful businesses run like clockwork. So get your complimentary quote today. Visit clockworks.nz. That's works with an X. Auckland's Drape Company. Drapes, curtains, blinds and shutters are a real investment in your home. The right look can make such a difference. So it makes sense to use the experience and expertise of Auckland Drape Company. With fabrics and the latest designs from all the major labels. And the latest technology and innovation. Talk to Auckland Drape Company today about a free in-home consultation. aucklanddrape.co.nz There's no one quite like you. You're one of a kind. At PIC Insurance Brokers, they know that stock standard insurance packages just won't cut it. You need tailored solutions that are right for you. PIC Insurance Brokers will get you sorted whether it's your health, your home, your business, even your car or boat. Your broker works with you to make sure you have the right cover. And should the time come, they're right there with you at claim time. PIC Insurance Brokers, great advice that works for you. Say goodbye to one-off discount days and hello to everyday fuel savings. Just fill up with the Wicked Waitomo app to unlock a bang for your buck. With every $20 or more you spend, you'll unlock bigger fuel discounts off everyday low prices. Sweet Waitomo, Kiwis Fuel and Kiwis with fairer fuel prices. This land's a gift to you and me. Not quite ready for retirement living? Oaken Residences will tick all the right boxes. Enjoy a carefree luxury lifestyle that offers you freedom in the heart of Howick Village. Free text Oaken to 3165 or call Cherie Bryce and Lisa Loy. Harcourt's Howick. Licensed RAAA 2008. Score epic school holiday deals at the warehouse. Zoom in for buy one, get one half price on Paw Patrol toys and make some mayhem with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys. Buy one, get one half price. On now at the warehouse. Conditions apply. Conditions apply. 
Chris Hipkins on the Leaders Breakfast continues next on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Bailey's Real Estate. This is News Talk ZB News. Good morning. It's 7.30. I'm Neva Reddy Manu. More than 1,000 people are dead in the unfolding war between Israel and Palestinian militant group Hamas. Israeli television says more than 700 of their people have been killed in the day and a half on since the attacks from Gaza. Palestinian officials say retaliatory Israeli airstrikes have killed at least 370 people in the Gaza Strip and wounded more than 2,000. Auckland University international relations expert Stephen Hoadley told Mike Hosking there's some hope the conflict can be contained and not become a generalised Middle East war. The other Arab countries in the Middle East have not mobilised against Israel. and They're leaving it to Israel to fight it out with Hamas. Israel's warned the Hezbollah in Lebanon not to get involved. U.S. correspondent Richard Arnold says officials are condemning the attacks. Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, says no one can live with terrorists breaching people's homes. Literally dragging people across the border with Gaza, including a Holocaust survivor in a wheelchair. And the world should be revolted. UK correspondent Gavin Gray says London police are increasing patrols around the city following celebrations over the attacks on Israel. Apparently, Gavin Gray says there have been lots of videos posted on social media from London streets of people holding the Palestinian flag. The Prime Minister admits the Foreign Minister's initial statement on Hamas attack on Israel could have been stronger. While other international leaders condemned it and recognised Israel's right to defend it, itself, Nanaya Mahuta described it as an outbreak of violence between Israel and Gaza and called for an immediate end to all violence. Chris Hipkins later said New Zealand unequivocally condemned it, calling it a terror attack led by Hamas. Hipkins told Mike Hosking he didn't talk to Nanaya Mahuta before her tweet. So I was um, unavailable. I was busy doing other campaign-related activities at the time, but I'm you know, very comfortable with the statement that I then put out later on in the morning. Meanwhile, the Labour leader says a more robust framework is needed around flood-related buyouts and managed retreat. Auckland Council's recently accepted a $2 billion cost-sharing flood buyout deal for damaged homes. Chris Hipkins told Mike Hosking there have been a number of natural disasters in New Zealand. Where we've had to put bespoke arrangements in place. I do see the stuff that we've done around the flooding and the cyclone as a one-off. The price rate at which supermarkets are paying their suppliers are slowing down. The Infometric Supplier Cost Index found they jumped 6.1% in the year to September. That's slower growth than during 2022 and early 2023. Infometric's principal economist Brad Olson says produce saw a decrease in price between August and September, likely because of the effects of Cyclone Gabrielle wearing off. Signs into Islander crews are charting a positive course for the service. Kiwi Rail has published the ferry's latest performance results in its 2023 annual report. Nick James says more. It shows the ships arriving within 15 minutes of their scheduled time has reached 83%, a 10% increase on the year before. However, it's not all rosy with that figure still being short of their 88% target. The annual report states it was a good result given the Kaitaki was out of action for two months after it lost power with 864 people on board in January. And that's News Talk ZB News with Kenworth Trucks Road Presence and Power to get the tough jobs done. To News Talk ZB Sport, to India have recovered from two for the loss of three in reply to Australia's 199 to win their opening 50 over World Cup cricket match by six wickets with 8.4 overs to spare in Chennai. Virat Kohli made 85 and KL Rahul contributed to 97 not out in a 165 run fourth wicket stand. Australian captain Pat Cummins has been asked how many runs short they were on Sky Sport. Yeah, I think at least 50 odd. Um, it's yeah, going to be tough trying to defend 200 on any wicket out there. Lewis Hamilton's been forced to retire from Formula 1's Qatar Grand Prix after a crash with Mercedes teammate George Russell on the first turn. The pair were jostling for second. Russell's recovered to sit fourth. The incident occurred shortly after former All Black Sonny Bill Williams was interviewed soaking up the VIP experience. The pressure is a privilege. This sport, man, it's a, it sure is a privilege out here because pressure is immense. Champion elect Max Verstappen has just triumphed in the race. Liam Lawson was 17th. Motorsport with CRC 556B into win a $2,000 Prezi card. All Blacks coach Ian Foster's World Cup preparations intensified as they get ready to meet rugby's number one side, Ireland, in a quarter final on Sunday morning in Paris. 
Foster says their opponent's 17 straight wins is a record that speaks volumes, especially having beaten New Zealand in a series for the first time last year. Obviously got a clear goal to create history for themselves and probably a plan accordingly. So come to a World Cup quarter final, you expect teams to know their game well. So they'll be confident, kind of love that challenge. Ireland have made the quarterfinals in eight of the nine World Cups, but have never advanced beyond the last eight. And Argentina will meet Wales in that last eight after beating Japan 39-27 in the deciding Pool D match. Kenyan Calvin Kipton has secured the world record at the Chicago Marathon, blitzing the course in 2 hours and 35 seconds. And Shane Van Gisbergen and Richie Stanway have become the second all-New Zealand team to win the Bathurst 1000 after Greg Murphy and Stephen Richards took the chequered flag in 1999. I'm Andrew Alderson, and that's News Talk ZB News and Sport to 25 minutes to 8. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time safe It's track. cool and purify with Panasonic heat pumps. Now a heavy patch on the northern motorway city bound at Silverdale. Then it's heavy from Constellation. Southwestern northbound moderate to heavy from Roscommon through to Portage Road. Northwestern moderate to heavy coming in from Hobsonville. And the southern motorway moderate to heavy in patches Manyare with through to Newmarket. Only Panasonic has Nano X Air purification. Find and install it. PanasonicAir.co.nz News Talk ZB Weather Watch 24 7 with Armstrong's dealership group. Drive now, pay later, terms apply. Monaco, southwest 15 knots, rising to 20, gusting 30 this afternoon. White to southwest 15, but 10 knots west of Harbour Bridge, becoming southwest 15 everywhere by late morning. Hodaki Gulf, southwest 20, gusting 30, and a strong wind advisory, bring head to Cape Colville. The high tide at Auckland, 20 past 4 this afternoon. Onihunga, about now, then 8 o'clock tonight. Today, cloudy periods with a few showers mainly this afternoon and evening. Also fresh southwesterlies becoming strong this afternoon. Tomorrow partly cloudy with isolated showers. Today's high 16, currently 12 here at News Talk ZB. Chris Hipkins in the hot seat. It's the Leaders Breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with the Land Rover Defender 130. Adventure now seats eight. News Talk ZB. 23 minutes away from eight, the Leaders Breakfast final one for the campaign of 2023. Chris Hipkins is with us. Just to go back to the economy, as we were talking before the uh, 7.30 news, uh, what you forecast was to, in 2021, spend 2.4 billion, 2022 it was 2.4 billion, and 2023 it was 2.6 billion. That was extra that you forecast you were going to spend. That was in the preview. You said 2.4, 2.4 and 2.6. What it actually turned out to be was 3.8, 6.4 and 4.8. So what you say and what you do are two different things. Well, I think we have to acknowledge that in the lead up to the 2020 election, we were dealing with huge volatility and uncertainty. And, uh, you know, the big spike in spending after the election was actually to get the country through COVID response. You know, we were looking at, um, you know, huge spending on the wage subsidy, uh, on a number of things that we put in place. You know, even things like shovel ready um, project spending would have come in after that. Um, You know, we had to support the country through quite a lot during that time. But why do you say you will do one thing and then do another? Um, well, look, I'm, I'm saying that the pre-election fiscal update now, the spending allowances that we've put in that, we're absolutely committed to sticking to that, barring, and I will, and there's always one one qualifier that you put on that, barring something massive and yeah, unexpected sure, Of happening. course, but, but, but no, one, no, one would, no one would be upset about that. But what I'm saying is when you sit here now in 2023 and go, we commit to do this, given the numbers I've just given you, why would anyone believe you? Well, there isn't a global pandemic now. No, but this is not. This is 2023, 2022. The pandemic ended several years ago, and you're still spending more each year than you say you will. Well, we've had to support New Zealand through the cost of living spike. Um, again, take some of those numbers. You know, we, we topped up the um, topped up the fuel tax. You know, so that we could um, cut, yeah, but you cut didn't fuel have tax to. costs. You didn't have people. to, and you can argue right now you should be topping it up again. If your rationale was to top it up, then why aren't you doing it again now? Well, well we we did it to support people through the highest peak in the you know inflation recycle. I, I go back to the question itself, though. You say you will do one thing, and then you do something different. We've, Why? Because we've dealt with some extraordinary circumstances in the last three years. But you're going back to COVID and we're out of COVID. We're beyond COVID. Yeah, but you're asking me about the three-year period between okay, well, when the go, last well, pre-election okay. fiscal update 20, 20, came out. 20, and all right, let's, let's stick to 2023, right? In 2023, you said you would do $2.6 million worth of extra spending. It turns out to be 4.8. 
Why? Because we saw a spike in inflation. That meant the price of everything went mm. up. And government, like everybody else, government has to be able to support people through that. So can we say, coming to the follow-up question, can we say that given what you're saying, why would we believe a word of it? Why can't you say, well, it might be inflation, it could be a storm, it could be something unforeseen, it could be anything you want it to be. It's just, that's what happened. Well, if you look at where the forecasts are heading now, if inflation's coming back down, we expect it to be back down to a more normal range by the second half, well, in the second half of next year, Still Depending on, uh, depending on when you know, be by by the end of next year, hopefully earlier in the second half of next year than uh, later. But do you have any evidence of that apart from what Adrian says? Because all I've seen with when it comes to inflation is they're wrong. It's like these forecasts; they're wrong every time. Yes, it's come off its peak. But it's stuck. Well, it's the, sticky. The Treasury and the Reserve Bank are both predicting second half of next year. Um, if you look at what's happened around the world, I think one of the things that's seen um, inflation stay higher for longer in other countries, including New Zealand, um, has been that fuel prices have been pushing that back up again. Uh, in yeah, the last, but that's the tradable the and months. non-tradable equation that we've talked about many times. And the stuff that we can control, we're not controlling. And one of the things is wages. And you, I've watched you in the House trumpet wages, and you are getting more money, and this is fantastic. And it's not fantastic. It's inflationary. Well, if, I mean, if you think that the way of bringing inflation down is to say to teachers, doctors, nurses, police, firefighters and others, we're not going to give you the pay rise that you've been asking for and you're going to financially go backwards. I don't think that's the way of bringing inflation down. And you haven't. But if you look you at, haven't. You've given you the money at, and you haven't brought inflation down. As I down. said, if you look at government spending as a pr- proportion of the economy, it's coming down. Barely. It, it's, Barely. it's coming back to the long run average. Barely. What's the inflation rate in the United States? Oh, I haven't looked at it most recently. It's a, it's about I think it was about eight percent last time I looked at it. Three point seven. Oh, sorry. You, I thought you said talking. You can you United you, States. I got, I got confused there. We're that's okay. No United problem. Kingdom is about eight percent. Let, let, let me give you the examples. Uh, we're at six percent currently, right? So our tra- the only trading partner you can cite that's remotely close to us is Australia. The rest, America's three point seven, China's zero point one, the UK six point seven, Japan is three point two, South Korea three point four, Germany's four point five, Singapore's four percent, Netherlands are three percent, and so. It goes. So are you ref- you're not referring to the quarterly numbers there, you're referring to monthly numbers. I, I'm like. annual inflation figures, the annualised inflation yeah, figures. Yeah, on a monthly basis. All of, all of these you're figures. You're not comparing apples with apples. All of these numbers have dropped. Yeah, but you're not comparing with apples with apples. You're looking at a monthly uh, annual inflation figure. We don't do that in New Zealand, we only do and quarterly. We should. So if you, yeah, well, fair enough, go and, go and have that up with the uh, Chief Government Statistician. I, I, I've talked to I, Grant Robinson about it many times, I, that's I, how you I, get I, a better read I'd, on I'd, where I'd, we I'd are. I'd have absolutely no problem with moving to a monthly readout, but at the moment, uh, on the quarterly readout that we do do get, which stats provide us, we're exactly the same as Australia. We're sitting at 6%. We are. So can I suggest to you the reason we are is because we've we've front-loaded the economy with so many wage increases and so much government spending, that's inflationary and will continue to be as long as we do that. No, I think if you look at if most most of our inflationary pressure is still coming from things like higher higher oil prices. No, it's not. The trade, the non-tradable inflation figure is higher than the tradable inflation figure. Yeah, yeah but the non-tradable that, inflation figure is the stuff we can control. But it what, is higher. It's in excess of six percent. Six point six percent, in but fact. But non-tradable inflation is affected by tradable inflation. So the price of building materials is still affected by things you know that are happening outside the country as well. So um, fuel prices still have an impact on non-tradable inflation. I feel there's an economic debate coming on. We'll take a break and have more in a moment. Seventeen away from eight. Are you wondering if you need a council consent to repair or replace the exterior elements of your home? Does your deck, your plaster or weatherboard cladding require extensive remediation? 445 Property Group is your one-stop shop specialising in remediation and weather tightness issues that don't require a council consent. We take care of all the trades so you don't have to. Get in touch today so we can discuss what works best for you. Call me, Craig, or go to 445propertygroup.co.nz. Hi folks, Grant Robertson here, out of inflation and high taxes, call Robbo's Removals and join over 218,000 Kiwis escaping overseas. Doctors, nurses, tech wizards, teachers, everyone's jumping on the Robbo's wagon. Call 0800 Tax Flea. 0800 Tax Flea, Robbo's Removals for me. This is a, a tongue in cheek impersonation of Grant Robertson promoted by the New Zealand Taxpayers Union of 117 Lambton, Key Wellington. 
this rate, everyone should be interested in an Exceda finance term deposit. 7.5% for 12 months. Exceda's rates are above what you can expect from the banks. So lock in a premium term deposit rate today and exceed your expectations at xceda.co.nz. Exceda Finance. How can we help you? Licensed by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Term deposits are offered pursuant to a product disclosure statement available on our website. T's and C's apply. They were holding up a sign on the side of the road. If you vote for us, give a toot. So I rolled down the window and I yelled out the car, I vote for Auckland Plumbers Group. They'll sort out your loo, they'll fix up your drain, they'll ease your worries and they'll soothe your pain. They're not politicians, they're a friendly troop called Auckland Plumbers Group. We're Auckland Plumbers Group. Here they come. We're here and there when you need us. We're the plumbers you call because we're on the ball. We're Auckland Plumbers Group. Here and there when you need us. When you vote this election, you'll be deciding who's got your back when times are tough. Labour will take GST off fresh fruit and veg, make dental care free for under 30s and keep free prescriptions. Party vote Labour. Authorised by Rob Salmon, 187 Featherston Street, Wellington. Bunnings Trade has your hardscaping supplies sorted. With all the balustrades, rails, screens, glass, fencing and decking materials you need under one roof. And with bulk delivery to site, you'll get what you need and finish jobs faster. Bunnings Trade. Helping business is our trade. The newsmakers meet their match. It's Heather Duplessy Allen Drive. Good afternoon. Axe campaign seems to be running out of puff. Two polls out today have the party in single digits. With us now is Axe party leader David Seymour. You know, if we're going to be less popular for being honest, then so be it. Do you think you need to lighten up a little bit? <laughs> well, I think the challenges that New Zealand faces are very serious. Heather Duplessy Allen Drive with One New Zealand back today at four only on News Talk ZB. 14 minutes away from eight, the leaders breakfast with Chris Hipkins. Uh, I want to get on to justice at some point, but just let's finish off on this business of uh, growth. The World Bank last week said 4.4 percent growth. They've lowered their growth forecasts for the region from five down to 4.4. Even if what you say is correct, and most of the banks are saying in Q3, which we've just wrapped up, Q4, which we're officially in now, at best we're scraping along the bottom. How is it they've got growth and we don't in the same region? Well, I mean, I think, Mike, you're coming back to questions on how how accurate are The Economist's forecasts. And as we've just highlighted earlier on, they haven't been particularly accurate up till now. They certainly weren't forecasting that we'd be getting the levels of growth in the last quarter that we've actually achieved. Um, so you kind of do have, a, you know, take a bit of a, a temperature reading from on the ground, if I think about put it, it. Put it this way, though. We are not performing as well as other countries in the region, no matter what the forecasts say. They are outperforming us. Why? Well, I, well, you can't make that claim. I mean, the most recent quarterly figures have only Japan ahead of us in terms of economic growth. Yeah, if you're taking one and quarter, so, but if you're talking for a whole year, you're talking about all of the Southeast Asia region, you're talking about Australia, you're talking up into Indonesia, Singapore, all of those, but they're all doing better than well, us. Well, actually, I, I totally disagree with you. If you take from the, um, the post-COVID period, so from the you know, end of the or the beginning of the pandemic, um, New Zealand's economy has grown faster than Australia's, faster than the UK, faster than the US, faster than um, the Eurozone. Um, you know, th- these things don't happen by accident. Why haven't you spent, say that's true, I don't agree with you, but say it's true. Well, that's what the facts say. Why haven't you spent more time on that and less time attacking the opposition? If you've got a record to sell New Zealand, why aren't you selling it? Well, I think we are. I think we are talking about our track record. And, but, but we're also, you know, ultimately elections campaigns are a contest of ideas. So you talk about your own record, you talk about what you want to do, but you also talk about, you know, you, you critique the proposals being put forward by your opponents as well. All right. Talk about justice for a couple of moments and there'll be more after eight, I suspect. An internal police report paints a picture of a broken bail system with checks on offenders who are convenient to check rather than high priority. Do you accept that or not? Um, I, I think we need to have another look at um, issues around home detention, bail and electronic monitoring. Um, I have been concerned in the last couple of months we've seen some high profile examples of violent offenders who have been electronically monitored um, where uh, that's ra- really raised eyebrows for me. I haven't been happy with that. So I think that is an area we need to look at. When you at say raised eyebrows for you, why weren't you aware that that was happening? Um, as, as I've indicated, you know, these high profile examples have happened in the last few months, but I think there's been enough in there for us to look at and go, actually, I don't think that system's operating as it should. So there was a dairy attack, as you are well aware, I'm assuming, late last week. He was on bail with an ankle bracelet. Why? Well, that's ultimately a question for the judge concerned, but I'm not convinced that um, we're seeing, you know, 
the right use of electronic monitoring. Bearing in mind, these rules around electronic monitoring have been in place since 2016, so they're not new, but there are certainly enough examples in the last uh, couple of months for me to be saying, I don't think that these people should be Why is it the last couple of months and why not for the last couple of years as we've screamed at you over the crime problem in this country? Well, we haven't seen the same examples that we've seen in the last few months um, you know, of people who are being electronically monitored doing this, this offending. There was a bloke the other day who I don't even know if they've rounded him up. He had the big Waikato tattooed, tattooed all over his head. He was charged with what? Oh, sorry, I, Mike, I couldn't, murder. Give, couldn't, couldn't give you a comment on each individual murder. case. Murder. He was charged with murder and he was at home with an ankle bracelet on. Explain to me under your watch how that happens. Like I said, the rules there have not changed since 2016. doesn't but, matter. You've but been, I don't you've been in charge for six years. I, I don't think someone charged with murder. And I don't want to comment on a specific case for no. obvious okay. reasons. Okay, but, so but, but, but I don't think someone charged with murder should be able to get electronic monitoring. Then why can they? Well, the, like I said, the rules have been in place since 2016. You've but been I think in we power, need to have another you, look You've got to stop this. You've been in power now for six years. If there's a problem in anything, you can fix it. Why haven't you fixed it? When I became Minister of Police midway through last year, um, I did say that I wanted us to change our approach in a number of these areas, and I changed the approach to the way we were dealing with gangs, with ram raids and so on. We've had several law changes go through Parliament since then. Um, I sponsored some of them, or co-sponsored them with the Minister of Justice, including giving the police more tools to crack down on gangs, more tools to crack down on ram raid type offending. This is an area where I think we need to have another look at as well. More in a moment, 10 to 8. Talk ZB headlines. A Kiwi tells what it's like to be on the streets of Israel. Israel and Hamas face a long and difficult war. Hipkins says Labour's committed to getting the country's books back in the blank. Cost increases from grocery supplies to supermarkets slow down. And in sport, Kenyan Calvin Kipton has secured the world record at the Chicago Marathon. Audrey Young, can Labour win from here? There's a narrow path. You can read more at NZ Herald Premium. Talk ZB Auckland. Time safe What an action packed family trip to North Queensland, Australia. Good morning. Now it's heavy coming in on the northwestern city bound from Royal. Moderate TV and patches southern motorway city bound Manurewa through to Newmarket. The northern slow through Silverdale again from Constellation. Southwestern northbound moderate to heavy between Lambie Drive and Portage Road. T's and C's apply. Learn more at bp.co.nz slash super holiday. Ivanka Zonich for Time Saver Traffic. Eat. Take a break from cooking because now you can jump online and order delicious heat and eat meals. The team at Eat create new menus every week. You just order the number of heat and eat meals you want by 11am and they're delivered to your door the next day. With no contracts or subscriptions, everyone's switching to delicious heat and eat meals delivered by Eat. See this week's new menu at eat.co.nz. Eat. Now, we all know the state of the public mental health services in New Zealand typified by the excruciatingly long waitlist people in real need being turned away because their condition or state of mind is deemed ineligible or their uh, symptoms are not severe enough. Uh, so it's a fight to get in. So no surprise then that we've got one of the highest youth suicide rates in the OECD. So Gumboot Friday, it fills this gap, a charity founded by Mike King that offers anyone 25 or under instant access to counselling for free no questions asked. The demand for these free sessions, as you can imagine, is rocketing. So last year, Gumboot Friday funded over 21,000 counselling sessions for our kids, and they are predicting that that number is going to double. So plain and simple, that means they need to raise $5 million, and that is where you come in. Inexplicably, they receive zero government funding, so we need uh, you to visit gumbootfriday.com to make a donation. That's one word, by the way, Gumboot Friday. Dot com. Uh, 100% of all donations made goes to free kids counselling, and there are not many charities that can say that. Gumbootfriday.com. Watch as the city centre becomes the canvas this art week from October 6th to 15th. With over 50 pop-up exhibitions, galleries, laneway installations, free art walks and more, plus late night art on Thursday 12th of October. Visit heartofthecity.co.nz. Since 2003, Platinum Homes have built thousands of quality homes across New Zealand, and we'd love to do the same for you. 
We're 100% Kiwi owned with strong partnerships throughout our supply chain. Build with confidence. Build with Platinum Homes. The Leader's Breakfast with Chris Hipkins on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with our leader, News Talk ZB. Seven away from eight. May take the uh, the crime discussion in after uh, eight o'clock as well. But uh, since um, March of 2018, 10,820 prisoners. March of 2023, 8,376. All the prisoners who aren't there, all the prisoners who got let out. Are you proud of that? When you look at who they are, what we, the areas where we've seen a reduction in the number of people in prison, it's been primarily traffic offences or drug and alcohol offences. The drug and alcohol offences, it's because I think there are better ways, in many cases, to deal with people with drug and alcohol problems than putting them in prison. So you stand on your record and you say, crime and justice, Labor 2020 through 2023, give us a tick, we're good at this. No, not at all. But there has not been a decrease in violent offenders in prison. The decreases have been in traffic offences and in drug and alcohol offences. How do you explain crime? 7% increase in acts intended to cause injury, 121% increase in serious assaults uh, relating an injury, 9% increase in common assault, 6% increase in sexual assaults, 19% increase in aggravated sexual assaults. How do you explain that? Okay, so I mean, let's, let's take a step back on this. None of those numbers are acceptable, but in the, in, let's just take a step back on it, though. In the post-pandemic world, ac- around the world, we are seeing an increase in violent activity. Um, that is concerning. We need to do more about it. New Zealand's not unique here. Um, we've, we've seen this escalating tension around the world. I think the, the post-pandemic, the removal of restrictions, some of the fracturing of social cohesion that happened towards the end of the pandemic period for New Zealand and actually right the way through the pandemic period for other countries, it is having an overall impact. We've seen young people more disengaged from school and getting into more trouble. Um, We've seen an escalation in gang tension in New Zealand. I think the police are doing a great job of getting on top of that, but it has had an impact on violence. We've introduced some new violent offence categories. So strangulation, non-fatal strangulation, for example. If you look beneath some of those violent figures statistics, that's actually starting to show up. This stuff wasn't previously reported. So you it is would, now being reported. You would argue for people who haven't voted yet that, that you're on the right track, you've got the right policies, and they will bear fruit. I, I would argue to them that you can't solve crime with slogans. Um, soft on crime, tough on crime. Don't, None no, of no, that's don't, don't solve back the crime. opposition. Defend no, I'm yourself. Not, I'm not. What I'm saying is I'm not going to offer you slogans. I'm going to offer you actual evidence-based approaches to dealing with criminal offending. You want to stop the offending happening in the first place. You've actually got to look at some of the underlying causes to it. That's what I've very much focused on. Take ram raiding. It is a good example. When I became Minister of Police a year ago, I said to the police, who are the repeat ram raiding kids? What do we know about them? 90% of these kids have got a parent who's either been in prison or is otherwise involved in the correction system. We've got to break the cycle for these kids or it's just going to keep repeating. Where would you say ram raiding's at this morning under your watch? Ram raiding Solved? Is, no, ram raiding's coming down. We know that for the fast track, so we put in place a fast track programme to get more intense of support around these kids. We know that for about three quarters of those kids, it's meant they haven't re-offended. That means that for the quarter who have re-offended, we've still got more work to do. All right, ask you about um, some of the bail situations with the police and we'll talk some more a little bit about crime. Um, probably on the climate, we'll depend to see the, 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 the hours they whiz by, the minutes whiz by. Chris Hipkins, uh, the Mike Hosking Breakfast, the Leaders Breakfast final for the campaign of 2023. The news in a couple of months. Want your brand to be heard? We'll put your brand in the right places. In front of the right people. Not a shotgun approach, but right on target. Smart Media. The media, an agency. Not quite ready for retirement living? Oaken Residences will tick all the right boxes. Enjoy a carefree luxury lifestyle that offers you freedom in the heart of Howick Village. Free text Oaken to 3165 or call Cherie Bryce and Lisa Loy. Harcourt's Howick. Licensed REAA 2008. The all-new EQE and EQS SUV now available at Mercedes-Benz Botany. And with an agility loan from Mercedes-Benz Finance, you can enjoy no deposit and guaranteed future value. T's and C's apply. Visit Mercedes-Benz Botany Retailer of the Year 2022. Visit your nearest Health 2000 store today. Trained staff will help you select quality wellness products to match your health needs. And pick up your free Health 2000 wellness magazine. My family feels better with Health 2000. Always dreamt of doing an Aussie road trip in a luxury motorhome? 
Cruising the iconic Great Ocean Road, indulging in the vineyards of the Barossa Valley, discovering the historical charms of Tasmania, or exploring the delights of Margaret River in Western Australia? Well, now you can. Rent a brand new premium Star RV motorhome. Book and travel this spring and be in to win the cost of your booking back. T's and C's apply. StarRV.com. Something special awaits. Hi folks, Grant Robertson here, out of inflation and high taxes, call Robbo's Removals and join over 218,000 Kiwis escaping overseas. Doctors, nurses, tech wizards, teachers, everyone's jumping on the Robbo's wagon. Call 0800 tax Flea. 0800 tax Flea, Robbo's Removals for me. This is a, a tongue-in-cheek impersonation of Grant Robertson promoted by the New Zealand Taxpayers Union of 117 Lambton, Key Wellington. Looking for a tropical island holiday that's close to home? Discover the beautiful French Pacific paradise of New Caledonia. Less than three hours flying time from Auckland on Air Calen. Whether you're craving French cuisine, beautiful beaches or total relaxation, New Caledonia has it all. Take advantage of Air Calen's sale fares from $5.99 return, including check-in luggage, meal and beverage service and entertainment. Seasonal surcharges may apply. Sale ends October 22nd. To book, visit aircalen.co.nz. In Auckland on 89.4, this is News Talk ZB. Chris Hipkins on the Leaders Breakfast continues next on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Arvida. This is News Talk ZB News. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock. I'm Neva Reti Manu. A New Zealander living in Tel Aviv has spent the day in a bomb shelter. More than 700 Israelis have been killed in the day and a half since the attacks from Gaza. Palestinian officials say 413 people are dead and more than 2,000 wounded by retaliatory Israeli airstrikes in the Gaza Strip. Paul Thomas told TVNZ the area usually isn't the war zone people assume and the community is completely shocked. I often say, you know, it's more dangerous than Courtney Place or Queen Street on a Saturday night than Tel Aviv. But last yesterday was something completely different. It's thought Israel faces a long and difficult war with Palestinian militant group Hamas. Auckland University international relations expert Stephen Hoadley told Mike Hosking the conflict won't be solved quickly. The Israeli army moving into Gaza, trying to find the hostages, trying to root out the Hamas operatives and so forth. This is going to take not hours, not days, not weeks, but months. Adding to the agony in that part of the world, hundreds are feared dead and thousands are injured after a powerful earthquake in western Afghanistan. Rescue teams are racing to find survivors, but are struggling to find survivors with communications down and many roads blocked. Labour's leader says they're committed to getting the country's books back in black. Chris Hipkins told Mike Hosking they shaved $4 billion in spending earlier in the year because they want to get the country back into surplus. Forecasts are very volatile and the national government found that and the Labour government Mm. has found that too. Forecasts can be very volatile but I still think governments need to strive to get the books back into surplus. And Hipkins says there is absolutely no prospect of Labour having conversations with New Zealand First about forming a government after the election. Some have suggested Hipkins could resign on election night to allow a new Labour leader to negotiate with Winston Peters. But Hipkins told Mike Hosking that Labour's commitment to not form a government with Peters applies regardless of who's leading the Labour Party. I didn't do that in isolation. I went and I got the endorsement from the whole team for that position. And Hipkins says the Farmac leader's comments about a journalist aren't the political neutrality he expects. In internal emails, Chief Executive Sarah Fitt said Rachel Smalley doesn't have much of a following. Another public servant called Smalley's interview with an advocate nauseating, and a third claimed an article by her was a pitch for the far right. A top blood doctor's called for Fitt to resign, saying the emails reveal a sick and sneering culture in Farmac. Chris Hipkins says he doesn't think it's reflective of the overall culture. The comments that she's made in those in that email trail are unacceptable. I, I would expect better of conduct from someone holding a a senior position. Cost increases from grocery suppliers to supermarkets are slowing down. The Infometric Supplier Cost Index show they rose 6.1% in the year to September, slower than during 2022 and early 2023. Produce fell in price between August and September. Infometric's principal economist Brad Olson says the weather was a factor in that. It does seem to be that the costs of Cyclone uh, Gabriel are starting to move away a touch. 
uh, or at least haven't been uh, putting as much further upward pressure on the system. And that's News Talk ZB News with Kenworth Trunks. To News Talk ZB Sport, Max Verstappen celebrated securing his third consecutive Formula One championship with victory for Red Bull at the Qatar Grand Prix, his 14th win of the season. That's one shy of his record haul last year with three races remaining. Oscar Piastri's finished second with McLaren teammate Lando Norris third. The race was observed by former All Black and Kiwi Sonny Bill Williams, who's enjoying a week off World Cup rugby commentary duties. I'm not going to lie, I don't know too much about F1, but just the little subtle things, it's inches, it's millimetres between winning and losing, potentially life and death. Liam Lawson's finished 17th and what looms is his final race with Daniel Ricciardo poised to return from a hand injury at Austin. Three-time Bathurst 1000 winner Shane Van Gisbergen saluting his co-driver Richie Stanaway. The pair became the second all-New Zealand team to win the race after Greg Murphy and Stephen Richards took the chequered flag in 1999. Motorsport with CRC 556B and to win a $2,000 Prezi card. An 86th minute winner by Gabriel Martinelli has secured Arsenal a 1 0 win over champions of Manchester City in football's Premier League. West Ham and Newcastle drew 2 all, as did Brighton and Liverpool. Wolverhampton and Aston Villa also shared the points 1 all. Argentina lose forward Pablo Matera's World Cup's likely over, courtesy of a hamstring injury suffered in his side's 39 27 win over Japan in Nantes. Matera left the field and was seen on crutches after the game. Argentina will face Wales in the last date at Marseille next weekend, with the winner advancing to a semi-final against the victor of the Ireland All Blacks fixture in Paris. Kenyan Calvin Kiptum has secured the world record at the Chicago Marathon, blitzing the course in 2 hours and 35 seconds, and 97 not out from KL Rahul's guided India to a 6-wicket to victory over Australia, with 8.4 overs to spare in their opening World Cup match at Chennai. That was a turnaround from 2 for the loss of 3 early in their chase for 200. I'm Andrew Alderson, and that's News Talk ZB News and Sport. Two five past eight. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver track. Delicious Faro frozen pizzas ready to eat in eight minutes. Now the Northern Motorway heavy through Silverdale again from Rosedale. Southern Motorway slow coming in from East Tamaki through to Newmarket. Southwestern northbound uh, heavy from the Southern Motorway link through to Port Puanui, I should say. Southbound a heavy patch from Dominion Road. And the Northwestern is heavy coming in from Royal. Grab Faro's frozen pizzas. Two for $30. Pizza Perfection at Faro. News Talk ZB Weather Watch 24 7 with Armstrong's dealership group. Drive now, paying later, terms apply. Monaco, southwest 15 knots, rising to 20, gusting 30 this afternoon. Waitemata, southwest 15, but 10 knots west of the Harbour Bridge. Hodaki Gulf, southwest 20, gusting 30, and a strong wind advisory. Bring head to Cape Colville. High tide at Auckland, 20 past 4 this afternoon. Onihonga, 8 o'clock tonight. Today, cloudy periods with a few showers mainly this afternoon and evening. Fresh southwesterlies coming strong this afternoon. Tomorrow partly cloudy, isolated showers. A high today, 16. Currently, we're sitting on 12 here at News Talk ZB. Putting the hard questions to Chris Hipkins. The leader's breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Bailey's Real Estate. Altogether better across residential, commercial and rural on News Talk ZB. It is seven minutes past eight. Uh, the second hour of the Chris Hipkins Breakfast. On the Mike Hosking breakfast. Um, let's just finish off with uh, crime and justice. Um, so, in March 18, 10,820 prisoners. March 2023, there were 8,776, 8,376. So, the prison population's gone down. You explain why you think that's happened. Bail granted. Here's your real problem. 2018, there were 2,061. Bail granted despite police opposition. In 2022, it was 5,084. That's a 147% increase. Explain that. Well, ultimately, it is a, it's a question for the judiciary. They make decisions on who gets bail and who doesn't. As I've indicated already, um, I am concerned about the characteristics of some of the offenders who are getting bail, and I think that's something that we do need to look at. And it might be that we end up tightening the law in that area so that people who are charged with violent offences like murder just aren't eligible for And it. how quickly would you change that law? Oh, I'd certainly be wanting to look at that, get some advice and get some legislation in the House as quickly as possible. Is this a come-to-Damascus experience that you've had in the last six 
six months as regards crime and what you actually needed to do with it? No, well, as I said to you just before, Mike, when I became Minister of Police middle of last year, I said that I thought we needed to change what we were doing. We've we've made several law changes since then. Um, we've changed, we've put, given the police more resource since then. And, uh, and I think that we need to keep going. Does the Sentencing Act need to change? Um, Sentencing Act and so I guess there's two there's two separate issues. There's issues around people on bail and on electronic monitoring and so on whilst they're awaiting trial, um, and I think that there are some concerns there. The issue around the Sentencing Act, I'd be a little more mindful before making changes around that because they're hiding behind it. Judges hide behind it and say, "Well, there's nothing to do with me. It's the Sentencing Act, and I'm forced to use it." Uh, judges get a lot of discretion within the Sentencing Act to uh, impose an appropriate so sentence. So you would, you would argue then that the judges who say, I'm forced to take into account the Sentencing Act, that's an excuse as opposed to the Sentencing Act being flawed. Well, ultimately, the reason that we have judges and the reason we have an independent judiciary is that we don't think politicians should be you know, handing down sentences for individual cases. That is actually the job of the judiciary. It's just the problem with, when you give all these numbers, it's it's under your watch that this, uh, the alarms have been set off. So in 2018, there were 52,000 retail crime incidents reported to police, and they resulted in 7,000 convictions. In 2022, there are 106,000 retail crime incidents. So in other words, it's gone from 52 to 106, but there's only 6,424 convictions. So the number of crimes has gone up, the number of convictions has gone down. How do you explain that? Um, if you look at you know the work that I did as Minister of Police, it was very much focused on the, <coughs> sorry, the, the retail crime area. Um, because I am concerned about the spike in retail offending that we've seen over the last 18 months. I don't think it's, well, it's slightly more than 18 months, over the last two years. I don't think it's acceptable. And, you know, the issues around RAM raiding, um, I just think have been horrific. And so um, it's one of the reasons why I'm changing the law there. And I, I've already sponsored a law change there and I've got another one through, going but, through. But if it's the judges who do it and not you, it seems remarkable that under your government that there are fewer prisoners and there are more crimes, and there are fewer convictions, and all magically that's happened without your interference in any way, shape, or form. Well, as I've indicated, if you look at the areas where there are fewer people in prison, it's primarily traffic offences and drug and alcohol offences. Yeah, but you can't hide from the statistics. How come there is more crime and fewer convictions? What's gone wrong? Well, in terms of why there are fewer convictions, that's a question for the courts and a question for police. We've put more police on the beat. I will just take a step back and say one of the areas of concern that I had when I became Minister of Police and I still have it because I still think we've got more work to do, is the length of time it's taking to get convictions. So when people are arrested and charged, it's taking months, if not years in some cases, for them to work their way through the court system. Right. I think we need to speed that up. How do you do that? Uh, we speed that up by putting more... We, we've got a pro, pro, project underway to speed up the police as part of that process. Um, but actually, it's also about better efficiency in the court. If you look at the number of times police are appearing for one case before a court, it might be be half a dozen times before the case is even heard, that's a waste of the police's time, that's a waste of the court's time. We've got to make that system operate more effectively. Is it possible that the police are so overwhelmed with crime that they don't charge? And so we've we've all seen it in some way, shape or form, so when the person wanders into the supermarket and steals the trolley load of groceries, there are no charges. Well, police have always got discretion about whether they No, I know they've got discretion, they but is it possible that that's what's happened? Um, th there, will, there will inevitably always be instances where police use their discretion not to charge, but those are Ultimately questions but there's for the a tremendous. I mean, when you're dealing with 106,000 retail crimes and there's only 6,424 convictions, that's an astonishing amount of discretion. So, isn't let, it? but minimum, let's have a look at just take the raw numbers on retail crime for a moment. One of the reasons that we're seeing more reporting of retail oh. crime is that the police have made it a lot easier for the retail businesses to do that. Good. They've literally put in place an electronic system where they push a button and the crime gets reported. That, that's the weirdest. So that's there has, no, but there has been an increase in reporting Good. of retail crime. Well, if there's if crime, at, should, so it should but, be But reported. if you look at the victimisation surveys, which are designed to take a step back from the you know reporting of crime, it would show that the level of crime is staying more static, but more of it's being reported. Now, that is a doesn't good make thing. It right. more of, it, no, if, of course it doesn't it, make it right. There's 106,000 retail crimes, conclude. even if you're reporting every single one of them, good. That's far too many retail crimes. Of course it is, but it's but it's also not right to say that that's suddenly a big spike. Yes, there's been a spike, but it, that, that, that increase in number will also reflect the fact that it's easier now to report it. Explain, though, how there's only 6,000 convictions. If it's not for the police not doing their job or being overwhelmed in resources or what, you can't explain it. If a crime's a crime and you're expecting it to be um, charged against, how is it possible there are next to no 
convictions. Well, in some cases, if unless you look, they arrested a whole lot of people who weren't guilty. Well, if you look, some of the some of this in terms of youth offenders stems back to law changes around the Oranga Tamariki Act and the establishment of the a, a changing nature, a changing approach um, to the way that we deal with youth offenders, and that predates our government. But yes, it's been continued by our government. We're conscious efforts are made with youth offenders to not end up taking them through a process where they end up being convicted and instead direct them onto something that's actually going to get them out of trouble. And you would defend that? I think that's... The, for, Given for, what we've seen in the past. For very year. young offenders, I think it's still far better to keep them out of the criminal justice system and turn their lives around than to end up uh, putting them in the criminal justice system and potentially leaving them on a pathway to being lifelong crime, criminal offenders. Chris Hipkins is with us, 13 past eight. Rugby World Cup 2023, All Blacks v Ireland. Live commentary this Sunday from 8am on iHeartRadio and News Talk ZB Auckland, 89.4 FM. Seize the day. Spring is here. Make it terrific. Stock up now on your favourite lipospheric vitamin C. People who know will tell you a lipo with a Y is the one to buy. Shop at Unichem and Life Pharmacies, Chemist Warehouse, Health 2000 Stores, Bargain Chemist and online at Health Post. Read the label, take us directed. John Appleton, Auckland. Live on lipospheric. If your car breaks down, you call a mechanic. Got a sore tooth? Dentist. So to increase your residential portfolio, why not start with a property lending expert like Resumac? They do things a little betterer when it comes to real estate lending. Resumac understand that not everyone looks the same financially, so they look at the grey as well as the black and white, hopefully helping you build on your success. Resumac, the lending alternative. Fees, TCs and credit criteria will apply. Hi folks, David Seymour here. When you vote at this election, forget the politicians' promises. Instead, think of the waste we're saddling our kids with. Think of the businesses ruined by crime. And think of the need to end the division of our country by race. It's not enough to change from red to blue. To ensure that your next government of New Zealand is one of real change, stand with me and Party Vote Act. Authorised by D Smith, 27 Gillies Avenue, Auckland 1023. Marching into Auckland this week, the Music Man in Concert, Broadway's happiest musical, from the producers of Chess, Jersey Boys, and Kinky Boots, featuring 24 big band songs, including the hit 76 Trombones, a huge cast of our finest performers and musicians, including the legendary Royal New Zealand Navy Band. Don't miss this extravaganza at the Kira de Kanoa Theatre. All remaining tickets at $65. Hurry to Ticketmaster today. Hi, I'm Mark Harris, Managing Director of New Zealand Sotheby's International Realty. It's great to see the real estate market gaining momentum again across the country. There's a good reason our 29 offices set more residential price records than any other company. Simply, we attract more buyers via our local and global buyer network and the world's leading residential real estate websites. Maximise the price for your property via the power and reach of New Zealand Sotheby's International Realty. Licensed RAA 2008. News Talk ZB, 16 minutes past eight. Chris Hipkins with us until nine o'clock this morning, last of the leaders breakfast. A couple of what you might call random ideas. Uh, Rishi Sunak the other day made what I thought was a very interesting speech, and that was that his ban on combustion engines isn't going to happen for another five years. Uh, he opened another oil field the other day because what he's come to is the realisation that as much as we may want to save the world, as much as we may want solar power, it's not real for now to the extent that we understand it to provide, you know, Surety. Why is he wrong and you're right? The UK and the New Zealand positions are very different. If you look at our mix of electricity generation that comes from renewables versus the UK's, I mean, we're miles ahead of the UK in terms of our existing electricity renewable generation. So we already have huge hydro, wind uh, and so on. Solar is is got great potential for New Zealand. Look at the Hawke's Bay. Those who had solar you know, panels on their roofs fared much better when the power got cut off than those mm-hmm. who didn't. So there's huge benefits from a resilience perspective of getting more solar. So we're in a different position. Um, I think, you know, transport-wise, the potential of hydrogen in New Zealand is significant because it's a way of harnessing renewable electricity and storing it um, for use for transport. So I think hydrogen's got a lot of potential for New Zealand, particularly for some of that heavy freight and so on. And um, the big companies are actually really interested in this. They're exploring yep. that actively themselves. Um, electricity for heavy freight's a bit more of a, you know, a challenging um, beast, but we've, we're, there's, there's some stuff in the early stages of trials there. 
probably the disappointment for us, um, for me, would be we haven't seen um, a greater diversity of electric vehicles entering the con- you know the, the household consumer market. Despite um, your best efforts to subsidise every man and his dog up the wazoo. So the, you know the the Utes and the the people movers. We haven't seen the diversity of vehicles you know in the electric no. vehicle space. So it's a sort of what I'm right. asking. You kind of got ahead of yourself when Jacinda Ardern famously talked about a Ute that didn't exist. It's all theory, no reality. I mean, it's based on what the the signals are that are coming from the men. Manufacturers who have all yeah, been but signal, saying that sig- you don't drive to work in a yeah. signal. You no, drive no, but to work they, in a they've U- all been saying that the EV Utes were only you know months away, and unfortunately, we are still waiting for those. Yeah, but that's the problem. That's the very problem I'm trying to isolate, and that's what Rishi Sunak sees: that what they think can happen and what is happening are two completely different things. And now you look at say Onslow and your obsession with Onslow. Would you still build that now at 16 billion plus? Um, Onslow is one option. What we have to look at is how do we get better battery storage? As I've mentioned, you know, you can have distributed battery storage. You can things like hydrogen have the potential to store renewable electricity. Why are we just happy with what we've got? We're a heavily hydro country. We're fine. And every, every every report that's been done, whether it's the Productivity Commission or the New Zealand Initiative, the moment you get above 96% renewables, it becomes expensive, inhibitively expensive, and Onslow's a classic example Because of the demand for electricity in New Zealand is going to grow far more than we're going to be able to sustain by adding more and more hydro capacity, which simply just don't have that many extra rivers to dam. So we have to look at how we're going to meet that growth demand through things like wind and solar and other renewable sources. And the reality here is that those tend to need more storage associated with them because, you know, wind wind can be variable. So on uh, solar, only, uh, so solar, you generate most of it during the day, and yet we know a lot of our peak can be, particularly in the winter, our peak can be when it's dark. So can we say Onslow's still alive? At four billion, sixteen billion, and God knows what it would be by the end. It's a still a live option. Well, Onslow, I think we keep Onslow alive as a as a base case to compare other options to. I actually think you know some of the stuff around distributed storage is looking very promising, and so you know the idea that you have solar panels with batteries in, in individual households, for example, mm. that could well prove to be a lot more cost effective. All right, let's come back and talk about the farmers in a couple of moments. Seeing we're on the climate, eight twenty. The Leader's Breakfast with Chris Hipkins on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with the Land Rover Defender 130. News Talk ZB. News Talk ZB headlines. The United States will send military support to Israel. Chris Hipkins says he'd do MIQ differently if he had his time again. The Northland electorate looks as though it's turning back to blue. And in sport, Max Verstappen has won the Qatar Formula One Grand Prix with Liam Lawson 17th. Gregor Paul, expanding Rugby World Cup to 24 teams might not be as bad as it sounds. You can read more at NZ Herald Premium. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver track. Good morning now to Three Kings. A crash on Hare Road between Mount Albert Road and Warren Avenue. If you can update us, 0800 jammed. The northern slow through Silverdale, heavy from Rosedale. Northwestern moderate heavy coming in from Royal. Southwestern northbound heavy from the southern motorway link through to Portage Road, moderate through Waterview Tunnel. The southern heavy coming in from East Tamaki. Ivanka Zonich for time saver traffic and travel. The general election is almost here. This is your chance to make your voice heard, to have your say on the issues that matter to you and your community. Voting in the election is easy and takes just a few minutes. You can find out everything you need to know about how to vote at vote.nz. Make your voice heard by voting in this year's general election. Brought to you by the Electoral Commission. Here from HRV with some good news for sneezing season. HRV home ventilation helps filter pollen, dust, and some allergens that can cause itchy eyes, runny noses, and all that sneezing. It's one more reason to ha 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 choose HRV this spring. HRV for a drier, warmer, healthier home. Hi folks, David Seymour here. When you vote at this election, forget the politicians' promises. Instead, think of the waste we're saddling our kids with. Think of the businesses ruined by crime. And think of the need to end the division of our country by race. It's not enough to change from red to blue. To ensure that your next government of New Zealand is one of real change, stand with me and Party Vote Act. Authorised by D Smith, 27 Gillies Avenue, Auckland 1023. 
Save on your 2024 Asia adventure with Flight Centre. Get 10% off selected Intrepid trips like this 10-day Vietnam Express southbound. Now from $1,735, airfares are additional. Call 0800 19008. Conditions apply. Flight Centre. Save like a boss with KFC's Wicked Pack from just $9.99. Rip it to two wiggity wiggity wicked wings, a snack burger, regular potato and gravy, and chips. The $9.99 Wicked Pack. Here for a good time, not a long time. Only at KFC. News Talk ZB823. Chris Hipkins with us until 9. Uh, just on the farmers generally. On the farmers in general, um, hey, Wakanoa, and when you sort it out. We've got a plan, we've set it out, um, which is to have uh, farm gate emissions being measured by the, by this time next year, so by uh, the last quarter of next year we'll have them mandatory reporting of their farm gate emissions, and we'll put a price on that a year after that. So that gives them another two years of lead time, but it does actually deal with the issue of putting a price on farm gate emissions. How would you describe the anger in the rural community from the farmers particularly towards your government? I acknowledge that there are certainly some very vocal people who, in the rural community who don't like our government but there are also some people who are actually quite supportive of what we're doing a lot of our export particularly at the processor level now I acknowledge that this isn't necessarily the farm gate level but at the processor level they are acknowledging that we have to do this um, if we want to remain internationally competitive then we have to continue to press into issues around climate change how did you cock up the carbon market so badly this year um, as I think we've acknowledged, we should have taken the Climate Commission's advice from the beginning. We were basically trying to support New Zealand households. Um, I don't think that uh, the decisions there were necessarily the right ones. And who made those decisions? Well, we collectively made them, and I certainly accept my share of responsibility for that. And why did you make them? Again, to because we wanted to you know, make sure that households weren't shouldering too disproportionate which a burden. Which goes back to my Rishi Sunak question, which is the theory versus reality of life. Well, wouldn't you love to be carbon neutral? Wouldn't you love to be 100%? All of the things that you want, to, but hold on, we can't afford to heat the house and we can't afford to pay the bills. Whoops. That's what counts at the end of the day. Yeah, and the balance that we've been trying to strike as a government is to continue to drive New Zealand towards a more renewable energy future, to actually continue to get our emissions down, but actually to find ways of doing that that don't significantly increase household costs. So... For example, let's talk about the emissions trading scheme. We could say let's just use the emissions trading scheme to drive, you know, to drive up the cost of carbon and therefore drive down pollution. That you know, you take the free market approach. We'll, we'll just put a price on it. The market will determine what happens. That's going to significantly increase household costs by doing things like the um, government investment in decarbonising industry or GIDI, We can actually bring our emissions down for cheaper than that, and therefore shield households from some of that cost. All right, uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back with our remaining half hour with uh, the Prime Minister Chris Hipkins. It is 8.26. Hosking. Now, KiwiSaver's been around for 15 years now and you'd think we'd be all over the detail and pretty familiar with it, but a report that we've read recently suggests not, which is remarkable if you think about it. It estimates that a million Kiwis aren't making the most of their KiwiSaver in the most basic of ways, either not contributing at all or not putting in the minimum each year to qualify for the full $521 government top-up. Now... $521 might not seem life-changing, but it's essentially free money, of course, so you miss out on that every year you're eligible, and you're going to be kissing goodbye to a uh, considerable amount of money by the by the end of the day. Fisher Funds knows KiwiSaver inside out, and is New Zealand's largest specialist wealth management company. Uh, they're perfectly qualified to help get your KiwiSaver on track and make sure that you're not missing any tricks as well. So, if you're ready to talk about your KiwiSaver, give Fisher Funds a call. They're always happy to chat, and you can head to their website. Fisher Funds, by the way, is the issue of the investment schemes product disclosure statements can be found at fisherfunds.co.nz that address is fisherfunds.co.nz maybe some chats about the business of MMP the leadership of Chris Hipkins over the past 8 or 9 months and we'll try and get some of your questions in uh, from the text machine as well as we wrap up the final of the leaders breakfast here at News Talk ZB where the news is next Foodies, Tom Sainsbury here. Guess what? DoorDash is shouting all new customers $0 delivery fees for a month plus 30% off your first four food orders up to $20 per order. Uh, hey guys, anyone peckish? Kebab or burger? Yeah, we can eat. You'll shout, yeah? Well, if it's food, I'll always shout. Oh, actually, don't put that on here. I have a lot of mates. DoorDash, delivering the goods. Oh, so good. From your hood. New customers only, $15 minimum order and max discount $20. Service fees apply. 
At this rate, everyone should be interested in an Exceda finance term deposit. 7.5% for 12 months. Exceda's rates are above what you can expect from the banks. So lock in a premium term deposit rate today and exceed your expectations at xceda.co.nz. Exceda Finance. How can we help you? Licensed by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Term deposits are offered pursuant to a product disclosure statement available on our website. T's and C's apply. Thinking about the roof on your new build or renovation? Then think about this. Aspect Roofing are winners of the 2023 NZ Roofing Association Roof of the Year. Aspect Roofing's skilled and professional team make choosing the right roof for your new home or reno a breeze. All new colour steel with a 10-year workmanship warranty, giving you peace of mind and a quality roof over your head. Visit aspectroofing.co.nz to organise a free quote. With the wind in your hair, the salt on your skin and the sun on your face, there has never been a better time to consider moving to your dream coastal destination. Discover Northland's hidden gem, Marsden Cove. Only 30 minutes drive south of Whangarei is Hopper Development's unique waterways destination. Waterfront living has never been more attractive. With beaches abound, marina, cafes, supermarket, medical centre and more, why look anywhere else? Sections are available now. For more info, visit marsdencove.co.nz. Harness the latest Google Ad Smarts and appear on YouTube and Google Shopping for those most likely to buy from you. Pure SEO is a premier Google partner. Talk to them today. 0800 search or go to pureseo.com. ITM's Toolbox Top Up Sale is back. Get your hands on all the biggest brands with massive tool deals, like our Makita bonus battery offer, because we know yours always go walking. Head in store or see itm.co.nz for more. ITM. Chris Hipkins on the Leaders Breakfast continues next on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with the Land Rover Defender 130. This is News Talk ZB News. Good morning. It's 8.30. I'm Nibiriti Manu. A terrifying time for New Zealanders in southern Israel, with the biggest escalation of conflict in the Gaza Strip in decades. More than 700 Israelis have been killed, and up to 100 Israeli soldiers and civilians have been kidnapped during attacks by the Hamas militant group. More than 400 Palestinians have been killed and thousands more have been wounded during Israeli counterattacks on Gaza. Western allies have been quick to express their support for Israel, with the US announcing it will send more munitions to Israel and will boost forces in the region. Paul Thomas, a Kiwi living in Tel Aviv, told TVNZ he knows many people affected, including a friend whose building was hit by a bomb. I have younger relatives and they all got called up for the army. My daughter has friends who are missing. And so there's those personal things, but it's more a, a collective shock. The BBC's Anna Foster is in the coastal city of Ashkelon. She says the skies have been lit up in recent hours. Because there's been a regular barrage of missiles that are being fired out from Gaza. And when they come, you see these points of light shooting into the sky. You see the missile be intercepted by Israel's uh, Iron Dome system. Labour's leader is standing by the managed isolation quarantine system, but adds it was full of complication and he would have done some things differently. Australia is owed almost $40 million in unpaid quarantine fees. And New South Wales is collecting unpaid fees from people's bank accounts. Chris Hipkins told Mike Hosking the government is chasing outstanding MIQ fees. I think it's unlikely we will get every dollar back. Debt to government is always proves to be tricky in, in any context to be able to recover. Hipkins says the mechanism for charging could have been better at the start and most of the debt is from earlier stays. And Hipkins says there should be another look at issues around home detention and bail. The rules around electronic monitoring haven't changed for seven years. And the Labour leader told Mike Hosking it's an area that needs to be looked at. I have been concerned in the last couple of months we've seen some high profile examples of violent offenders who have been electronically monitored where that really raised eyebrows for me. I haven't been happy with that. To the wider election now, and it's a push all the way to Saturday for candidates in Northland. A taxpayers' union courier poll last month had Nationals Grant McCallum well ahead of Labour incumbent Willow Jean Prime, New Zealand First Shane Jones and the other candidates. McCallum says he's taking nothing for granted in the traditionally blue seat. We'll just keep working really hard right till election day and we'll just, we hope we earn the respect of the voters. 
Jones says it's important the race be invigorated to the end. No political party should naturally assume that an electorate is theirs by dint of party pedigree. We should force each other to go out and win it. Prime says she's always been pragmatic about the fight she's in. Yes, we can get polls. They're interesting, but the only one that matters is the one on election day, and so I will keep going hard. Dunedin City Council is getting in early on feedback for its next 10-year plan. The council is looking for residents' opinions to help them strike the right balance between investing in the city and keeping things affordable. That's News Talk ZB News with Kenworth Trucks, road presence and power to get the tough jobs done. News Talk ZB Sport. All Blacks coach Ian Foster believes his side can defeat an Irish team unbeaten in their last 17 outings. Foster's spoken for the first time since the World Cup quarterfinal match was confirmed for Paris on Sunday morning. He says Ireland have been on an upward trajectory. This is probably their moment. If they're ever going to win a World Cup, they'll probably feel like it's now. We've got some players and, and as a team we're kind of in the same mode. Ireland have made the quarterfinals in eight of the nine World Cups but have never advanced beyond the last eight. And Wales will meet, meet Argentina after Los Pumas uh, beat Japan 39-27. And Fiji lead Portugal 3-0 late in the first half of their final pool match at Toulouse. They need a competition point to advance to the last eight ahead of Australia. News Talk ZB's coverage of France 2023 with Harvey Norman. Blackout deals on TVs, audio and home appliances. Max Verstappen celebrated his third consecutive Formula One championship with victory for Red Bull at the Qatar Grand Prix, his 14th win of the season. That's one shy of his record haul last year with three races remaining. Oscar Piastri's finished second with McLaren teammate Lando Norris third. Liam Lawson's come 17th. Lewis Hamilton retired after a crash at the opening turn with Mercedes teammate George Russell. India have recovered from two for the loss of three in reply to Australia's 199 to win their opening 50-over World Cup cricket match by six wickets with 8.4 overs to spare in Chennai. Virat Kohli made 85 and KL Rahul contributed 97 not out in a 165-run fourth wicket stand. Australian captain Pat Cummins has been asked how many runs short they were on Sky Sport. Yeah, I think at least 50-odd. Um, it's yeah, going to be tough trying to defend 200 on any wicket out there. Shane Van Gisbergen and Richie Stanaway have become the second All-New Zealand team to win the Bathurst 1000 after Greg Murphy and Stephen Richards took the chequered flag in 1999 and Kenyon Calvin Kiptum has secured the world record at the Chicago Marathon, blitzing the course in 2 hours and 35 seconds. I'm Andrew Alderson and that's News Talk ZB News and Sport to 25 minutes to 9. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver traffic. Big Labour weekend saving starts early at Hyperdrive. Now the southwestern heavy northbound between the Southern Motorway and Portage Road, southbound moderate to heavy at Hillsborough. Looking at the northwestern, a moderate heavy run coming in from Lincoln Road. The southern heavy east Tamaki through to Newmarket. The northern slow through Silverdale again from Rosedale. Save 40% on selected brands including Pirelli, Hankook, Yokohama and more at Hyperdrive. News Talk ZB Weather Watch 24 7 with Armstrong's dealership group Drive Now and Pay Later, Terms Apply. Monaco, southwest 15 knots, rising to 20, gusting 30 this afternoon. Waitamata, southwest 15, but 10 knots west of the Harbour Bridge, becoming southwest 15 everywhere late morning. Hodaki Gulf, southwest 20, gusting 30, and a strong wind advisory, bring head to Cape Colville. The high tide at Auckland, 20 past 4 this afternoon, and at Onihunga, 8 o'clock tonight. Today, cloudy periods with a few showers mainly this afternoon and evening. Also, fresh southwesterlies becoming strong this afternoon. Tomorrow, partly cloudy with isolated showers. Today's high 16. Currently, we're sitting on 12 here at News Talk ZB. The policy versus the personality. Chris Hipkins, the leader's breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Arvida. Live the age you feel. News Talk ZB. It's away from nine remaining moments with Chris Hipkins as the uh, final days of this campaign countdown to uh, Saturday. Uh, by the way, just in Fonterra, uh, this is the good news. They've raised uh, after the last three auctions now that we've had uh, substantial rises in the auction. Uh, so they've come to the party. They've raised the 23-24 uh, forecast farm gate milk price uh, to six fifty to eight dollars. So somewhere in between six fifty and eight dollars. That midpoint is now seven twenty-five, which is up fifty cents. So it's gone from six seventy-five to seven dollars.
dollars twenty-five. It's still not the eight that most farmers would want, but um, you know. It's closer than it was. Right, Chris Hipkins, as far as the... Um, we haven't talked about race in this country yet, so let, let's do this. Have you over-egged the general ideological response to what we should view the treaty as? No, I don't think we have, but I don't think we've also, um, you know, done what we should have done in terms of explaining to the public what we're doing and why we're doing it anywhere near enough. And so I did a speech uh, a couple of weeks ago up in Northland where I talked about what we've done, why we've done it. I think we should have done a lot more of that. Why didn't you? Um, well, I've only been the Prime Minister for six well six months before the campaign began. And uh, I did do a speech at Waitangi at the beginning of the year where I talked about you know what we were doing in this space and I uh, didn't have as much opportunity to elaborate on that as I, as the, I would have liked. This goes into part to, to, to what people blame you for, if people blame you, and that is that this, I've only been Prime Minister for eight months. You've been here donkey deep for six years. You're a senior player in the Labour Party. So whatever's gone right or wrong, you're as responsible for as anybody else. Fair? Oh, look, I accept collective responsibility as a Cabinet Minister for all the decisions our government's taken, but I've, I've also only been leading those decisions right. for about six months. But then the question being, did you raise, if you were concerned about the way you were um, you know, communicating with the public about the treaty or not, did you raise with anybody as a Minister of anything that you say, guys, we need to be doing more of this or else we're going to get ourselves in trouble? Uh, I, I, certainly I've you know, took part in conversations about that. It's natural when you have big portfolio workloads like I did, you know, education, health for a while, police, um, COVID-19, that you focus in on your own portfolio areas rather than necessarily always being actively involved in everybody else's. Are the policies that you run race-based? No, I don't believe that they are. Even when you only get something if you happen to be Maori. And so, unless you're Maori, you don't get it. So and that's not race-based. Again, let's take a step back. So one of the most prominent recent examples of that is the work that uh, the health system's been doing to address wait times, you know, wait, you know, times that people are waiting for surgery. What they found when they looked at it was that if you are Maori, Pacific Island, or living in a rural community, mm. you're more likely to be waiting longer than other New Zealanders. And they're saying we want to do proactively do something about that. I, I don't want to get bogged down on this because we will, because you've argued this line all along and at least you've been consistent, but this business of being in a rural area has nothing to do with race. It's got to do with being in a rural area. So if you're not getting seen by the doctor, it's because you live rurally. So whether you live rurally, a Maori person lives rurally, or a woman from China lives rurally, it's the rural is the problem, not the race. So you can you're conflating two things here. If you identify any segment of the population that's being discriminated against by the health system, whether it's based on where they live or whether it's based on their ethnicity or their gender um, or some other factor, then I think that we should be proactive in taking steps to address wouldn't that discrimination. The, wouldn't the answer be to place a facility in the rural community, thus serving all the rural community, as opposed to setting up a completely separate race-based organisation? Well, we've got a challenge about how we can best serve the health needs of rural communities. You're absolutely right on that. We um, have a shortage of rural GPs, for example. We need to do something about yeah, that. Yeah, come back to the race-based side of it. But, but, but there are other things. So if you look at the work we've been doing with pharmacies, for example, around minor winter ailments, so that you can go to the pharmacy and actually get more care straight away from the pharmacist without having to go to the GP, without having to get a prescription... That is going to benefit people living in rural communities. It's also going to benefit those populations who have been underserved. We're not talking about that. We're I, I talking, think, we're, I think that's we're talking about facilities and services and expenditure for people that are race-based. In other words, unless you are of that race, you cannot get that service. What I would say is where this, the health system has been uh, historically discriminating against people, proactive action to deal with that discrimination I'm comfortable based with. on race is acceptable. Well, if if the cause of the discrimination is race has been race, then, then proactive proactive it on race then, in your view then proactive action is the answer to address that discrimination. I'm okay, okay with. So, so to save us arguing for the rest of the half hour, you would argue going into this election campaign and looking for votes that what you've done on race is acceptable and a good idea and there'll be more where that came from should you win. Oh, look, I think some of the programs, you know, um, if, if we look at, in the health si system, you know, some of the programs where they've been piloting different approaches, I think we need to learn from those. Um, and where, where the learning, where the lessons can be applied more, you know, across the board to the whole population, we should do that. Right. What's that mean? Because I didn't understand what you just said. Yeah, OK. So um, if we take the minor winter ailments thing that I just okay. mentioned before, in the pilot of that, there were some proactively targeting Māori and Pacific right. communities. You won't that. be doing that in the future. I, I actually think we've seen the results. It's positive. We should apply it to the whole community. OK, so no less race-based. Uh, 
only where it's justified. All right. More in a moment from Chris Hipkins, 18-2. Save thousands on kitchen, bathroom and laundry renovations. Shop online at Trade Depot. Freestanding stoves just $399. Fridge freezers just $395. Dishwashers just $350. Washing machines just $289. Save thousands on renovations. Shop online now at Trade Depot or visit the massive Trade Depot store in Onihunga. I remember Dad's face when I told him. He cried. I'd never seen him cry before. He begged me not to do it again and asked me to try Gumboot Friday. Gumboot Friday is a free counselling service for anyone 25 and under. But because we're not funded, we need your help. Visit gumbootfriday.com to learn more or text BOOTS to 469 to make a $3 donation. Talking to a counsellor has really helped the way I think. I'm still not 100%, but I'm 100% better than I was. They were holding up a sign on the side of the road. If you vote for us, give a toot. So I rolled down the window and I yelled out the car, I vote for Auckland Plumbers Group. They'll sort out your loo, they'll fix up your drain, they'll ease your worries and they'll soothe your pain. They're not politicians, they're a friendly troop called Auckland Plumbers Group. We're Auckland Plumbers Group. Here they come. We're here and there when you need us. We're the plumbers you call because we're on the ball. We're Auckland Plumbers Group. Here and there when you need us. Bank said no to a home loan? Talk to us at Pepper Money. We're a non-bank lender with a more flexible approach to lending. We specialise in finding options you may not get from traditional lenders. And if we can find a way to help, we will. Looking for a real-life attitude to home loan options? Talk to Pepper Money. Loan applications are subject to responsible lending checks based on your individual circumstances. Terms, conditions, fees and loan eligibility criteria apply. Our financial services provider number is 660011. When you vote this election, you'll be deciding who's got your back when times are tough. Labour will take GST off fresh fruit and veg, make dental care free for under 30s and keep free prescriptions. Party vote Labour. Authorised by Rob Salmond, 187 Featherston Street, Wellington. Struggling to keep up with your accounts receivable, payable, payroll, GST, FBT and all the other acronyms? Outsource it to Clockworks, New Zealand's zero award winning bookkeeping provider. Visit clockworks.nz for a free quote. Trusted names for news and opinion. It's not that difficult to protect your people and protect the Tonga that are the lakes and the waterways of this country. But so many councils don't seem willing to do it. And then, under threat of prosecution, they turn around and blame the water regulator? Come on, give me a break. Tax cuts are fiddly. There's an ideological thing at play. Whether or not you think it's right that you have tax cuts, which clearly mean there aren't going to be, there isn't going to be as much money to fund services. Talking the stories that matter. News Talk ZB. It is 8.45, remaining moments with Chris Hipkins. Um, the Russian legislation before the parliament lifted, do you think you'll regret any of that? And was that fair and open democracy? Oh, absolutely it was. I mean, the, the rush of legislation before the end of parliament happens in every parliamentary term. It's a matter of you know clearing off legislation. Most cases, that legislation had been through the select committee process. It was just a question of getting more House sitting hours to tidy things up before the election. And if you win the election, three waters is full steam ahead. A- absolutely. Um, or the water infrastructure reform is full steam ahead. The alternative is to leave it to councils and let people pay for it in their rates bills. The rates increases that people could be staring down the barrel of without reform will be huge. Is that one of the things you wish you'd sold better? Absolutely. What else would you have liked to have sold better? I certainly think water infrastructure reform we could have sold better. Um, the establishment of the Māori Health Authority, I, again, we, we were just talking about that. I, I think there's very good reason for that, and I think we should have been more proactive in selling that. Uh, the centralisation of the polytech, you would argue, is a success story that you hang your hat on? We've got record growth in the number of people taking up apprenticeships. If you look at what we're trying well, to do... Well, you could have done that without centralising. But, but if you look at what we're doing, we're bringing the on-the-job training and the off-the-job training together. That is the way of the future. The young people taking years out of their you know, potential of, of earning to go and sit in a polytech classroom for years at a time, um, fewer and fewer young people are willing to do that. You've got to bring the on-the-job and the off-the-job together. On-the-job training, apprenticeships and the like, is actually going to be increasingly they're the sort of se- They're sort of separate. You're, you're you, you could have done all of that without centralising. You still argue that centralisation is is a success story. You believe in it, and it's working. Well, if you take an apprentice, the, the apprentice is a very mobile.
mobile, they could be working in any part of the country. So you've got to have a nationally coordinated system to be able to support that. So you agree with it? You think that centralisation is a good way? I don't characterise it as centralisation. Well, it is. It's it's taking a whole bunch of politics and putting them together under one one head office, and that's what you've done. Having one system of vocational education for the country isn't necessarily centralisation. There's still going to be politics in every regional area. Okay. Do you have regrets around... uh, Did you read Bryce Edwards' piece the other day, The Ten Reasons You've Lost All the Support You've Lost? No, I haven't. Like, I can't say I read Bri- every one of Bryce's columns. <laughs> this, so. was, this was a particularly good one. One of, one of the things he argues, and it goes back to this 50%, you got this extraordinary mandate under unusual circumstances that will probably never happen again in an MMP environment. And yet, do you have regrets around not bringing more people with you? Let, let's be clear about what the extraordinary mandate we got in 2020 was. It was an endorsement of our response to COVID-19. Um, and, you know, I think we we kept faith with the electorate. We led New Zealand through the, the global pandemic. I believe that's what they gave us the mandate to do. Right. Do you regret going forward from there with your 50%? You will end up on current polling having lost half of them. Uh, look, I, I think the, the polls, I think we're going to do significantly better than the current be polls are indicating. You're gonna, you've lost a lot of people either way. And do you regret losing that many through what could have been something completely different if you communicated better, differently? Realistically, I don't think we were ever going to keep the 50% of the vote that we got in 2020. I think that was an extraordinary election. Could we argue that if you got 50% under MMP, that that a, a, a successful large party could be yours, should have 40% and you don't? and you won't, and there's a problem in that, and what is that problem, and is part of that communication? Under proportional representation systems around the globe, um, actually one single party achieving more than 40% of the votes relatively unusual. Um, if you look at right the way across Europe, where they have proportional representation systems, the parties leading government t- typically tend to be getting somewhere in the mid-30s in terms of the percentage that right. they get to lead You're government. wandering off down that, the path. But no, just, but just, that just, is the nature of proportional representation. I, I, okay, go, go back to the original question, though. Do you regret the way you communicated with the people of this country and has it hurt you? Oh, there's always things that we could have done better, absolutely. And what oh, look, I'm not, I'm not claiming perfection, Mike. I'm certainly not no, going no, to stand I'm up here a, and say that everything in the last three years was perfect. But what could you have done better? If you look at areas where I think um, it got challenging for us on the pandemic front, the exit from the elimination strategy, you know, the move to having COVID circulating in the community and vaccination, that was clearly the point where I think our national unity around our COVID response became, uh, well, a fraction. And, uh, you know, I've reflected a lot on whether there were things we could have done to change the outcome there. I mean, I think it was always going to be a bumpy road going from elimination to having COVID circulating in the community. And uh, that proved to be the case. The rise in the cost of living is one of the things that has clearly meant that a lot of New Zealanders are contemplating change at this election. That rise in the cost of living has been a global phenomena. Um, but, you know, when your interest rates are potentially doubling, you know, when your mortgage repayments are potentially doubling, when it's getting more expensive to fill up your car and when it gets more expensive to go to the supermarket every week, clearly that's going to put you in the mood for change. My, my challenge to New Zealanders is change to what? Because I don't think the other side are offering anything that's going to leave you better off. No, we've heard that before. Nine minutes away from nine. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver. KFC's Give Me Five is back. A crash in Hillsborough on Hillsborough Road just at the Southwestern Motorway. If you can update us, 0800 jammed. The Southern Heavy coming in from East Tamaki, southbound on the Southwestern Moderate TV from Dominion Road. The Northern Moderate TV coming in from Rosedale, Northwestern Moderate to Heavy. Uh, citybound just before Partiki. Five pieces of chicken and chips, 11.99. KFC's Give Me Five available in store only. The boss said he's too busy to explain why I've got so little leave. Really? We use Crystal Payroll. I can see all my leave on my mobile. Look. (laughs) That's good. And that's why I just grabbed the deal to Hawaii. (sighs) Jealous. Crystal Payroll. So clear. So transparent. Can you see what I can see? The biggest rugby league event since the 2017 World Cup is here. Don't miss the blockbuster triple header between New Zealand, Samoa and Tonga. It's all going down at Tamaki Makoto, Auckland's Eden Park on October 21st. The Kiwis will face Samoa. The Kiwi Ferns will line up against Tonga. And an NZ Kiwi A-team will assemble for the first time in 17 years. A full day of culture, code and an unmatched atmosphere this Labor weekend. Ticket selling fast. Get yours from Ticketek. Hiring staff for your team or business is a never-ending nightmare. 
costing way too much time and money. We're all tightening our belts these days. So with zero placement fees, Join is a proven system that can save you thousands. Join's extensive network of specialist recruiters across New Zealand means you can partner with your own dedicated recruiter today. Join the hundreds of smart Kiwi businesses who use Join to hire great people. Go to join, joyn.co.nz. You can vote now in the general election. Meet up with your friends in Fano and go to a voting place close to home to make it quick and easy. Come on, pup, let's go together. <laughs> Find your nearest voting place at vote.nz or call 0800 36 76 56. Brought to you by the Election Commission. No Leaming Supermax deals are on now. With great deals on small appliances, personal care, smart home and more. Plus get flexible payment options to suit you. Conditions apply. On now at No Leaming. Available in store and online. The Leader's Breakfast with Chris Hipkins on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Bailey's Real Estate on News Talk ZB. Seven away from nine. Uh, real quick question on coalitions. And as much as you want to focus on Hipkins and uh, on Luxon and his various machinations, what about you and Rawari, a bloke who doesn't even believe in democracy? What on earth are you hanging with them for? The Māori pa- the radical rhetoric from the Māori Party is nothing new. I mean, you heard the same radical re- rhetoric from them uh, during the years that they were campaigning effectively to be part of a John Key-led national government, and they were a very constructive partner in that government. So that's, it's all hot air? Well, you know, the Māori Party's track record of working constructively with the key and English government. No, that, that, was, actually, different, that was a different Māori Party. Well, no, but That's that was, Tariana Turia and Peter platform, Sharples. That is not Rawari. He's, he's, he's a crazy man. Pla- well, they had Hone Harawira in that team. The platform has not changed. So you're, you're, you, you don't bother, you're not bothered by them. There's nothing radical about them. They're not going to upend any sort of coalition negotiations in the same way you would like to see or hope that Peters does with the other side. I think they would be the same, kind of bring the same pragmatic approach to governing if they're in the position to do that after the election uh, under a future Labour government to the one they did under a key English government. Okay, Mark your Labour government against the Helen Clark Labour government, the Longy Labour government and the Adurn Labour government. Oh, if you're talking about the last six months? Um, I, I, I think, thought it was eight months. Well, six months before the, I mean, the, uh, the campaign period, before the campaign period right. began, um, I, I think we've we've done pretty well. But I mean, I, I'm, I just think numbers out of out of ten don't really mean a lot. I didn't ask you for numbers out of ten. Are you one of the great Labour governments? I think we've history will too judge, long a pause. History judges those things. How would you judge Helen Clark's government? Oh, I think of a very successful government. How would you judge David Longy's government? I think a very successful government. How would you judge Jacinda Ardern's government? A very successful government. And how like. would you judge yours? I think it's been a successful government. You say, you're not even saying that with a straight face, Chris. No, I think it has been a successful government. Look w- w- look at the areas that I've made a priority in the time that I've been Prime Minister. I've made international trade a priority. We've got the European Union Free Trade Agreement signed. We've got the UK Free Trade Agreement coming into force. Very successful trade mission to China. If you look at the work that we've done around supporting New Zealanders with the cost of living, um, you know, we've had some um, very sensible, pragmatic approaches to you know cutting the cost of living. We've got inflation coming back down. We've got government debt. Um, um, you know, we, we, we've got a plan to get back into surplus so that we keep government debt under control. We are rebuilding the country's infrastructure. You know, the, our schools and our hospitals are being rebuilt. We've got real momentum on those issues and we've got to keep moving forward on them. Have you eaten too much during this campaign? Far too much. Have you put on much weight? Far too much. <laughs> why, why do you keep eating? I don't know. There's something. It's become a compulsion. It's like whenever food comes out, the cameras suddenly swarm around me like bees and they, they won't go away until I eat something. Well, fair enough. Good luck on the, uh, the rest of the campaign for the week. Thanks, What's Mike. your prediction for Saturday night? Um, I'm, I'm well beyond making predictions, but I think we're going to do significantly better than any of the polls are indicating. Are you going to be government? Oh, look, that's certainly the goal. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you and uh, good luck. And we'll talk on Saturday night. Just just, just on Saturday night, if it doesn't go well for you, you're not going to pack a set and not talk to me on the radio, are you? Oh, look, I'll, I'll be there on Saturday night um, for good or bad. Will you be on the show on Saturday night? Oh, I don't know if I've had an invitation oh, yet, Mike. So. Nice to see you. Good, good, luck to see for you. The, good, good luck for the rest of the week. Chris Hipkins, the news is next. We're back tomorrow morning at 6. As always, happy days. Gate, bro.
price is low, Skinny has printed this radio script on a wall near a law firm in the hope that a lawyer like me might call the number provided and recorded on their mobile for free, thus saving Skinny thousands in recording costs. They get this ad read for free. In exchange, I get a moment of fame, which, now that I say it out loud, doesn't seem like an adequate compensation for total and unbeatable.